Hi everybody, I'm here in Detroit, not the home of me, but the home of some sports teams that are as inconsistent as my audio. Here at good old Motor City, nothing here is quite as important as cars. Everybody knows what a car is, but what if Super Mario drove one? Mario Kart. For over five years, this series has driven its way into the hearts of millions. So much of this series is iconic. The characters, the items, and especially the courses. Across all the entries, there has been so many places this colorful cast has raced upon. But how many of them are actually safe to be on or even spectate at? Well, that's a complicated question. For Mario characters, it might not be so bad. But for your everyday Paul, not, not so much. So I went through the whole lineup of courses and evaluated how safe they would be in real life for both the actual racers and the spectators, and I can confidently say that this is probably hopefully just might be the definitive ranking. As of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's booster course pack, I believe there are 284 courses playable throughout all the first eight games. I'm gonna bunch up all the retro courses and rank all of those together, leaving us with a total of about 150 that currently need to be covered from what I counted. I'm gonna be ignoring tour exclusive tracks because I don't want to subject myself to any tour courses, except for Piranha Plant Pipeline, that one's fine. Mario Kart Home's also gonna be skipped. I don't really know how that one's gonna be talked about. All the courses are probably a okay if they take place in your house. Uh, also, just for the hell of it and to have a bigger number, I'm adding all the arcade GP games, not only since they're simple enough, but I'd do anything for Pac-Man. And just because I can, Diddy Kong Racing's being included, because I like Diddy Kong Racing. It has bumper, it has tip-top. When it comes to road safety, I trust Diddy with my life. I split these courses into five major tiers, and the first one is where I put the most viable to drive tracks. This tier is known as Scrum Diddly Weenie Hut. Go-kart tracks that are so simple they could be actual go Car tracks. They might have one or two things that need to be tweaked, but I can't really say anything is wrong with this batch. Take for example the DS Track Figure 8 Circuit. I fully believe this is the safest one of them all. Wide turns, wide road, nothing memorable. It's forgettable, but it's acceptable. The only thing that could top this would be the Universal Ride. You would have to go out of your way to break your bones or vital organs on this. I should note that I'm ignoring item boxes in this rambling. Obviously, explosives and lightning aren't that good of an idea for all the babies on the raceway. Making baby parts go from one of the most chaotic tracks to one of the safest imaginable. The name fits now. I didn't really put that many courses here because there are so few that would be totally safe with just a couple tiny tweaks, so treat this tier like a backhanded compliment. In real life, they might be safe, but in-game, they're usually some of the less beloved guys. I'm also a bit shocked to say this as well, but a good amount of Diddy Kong and all the GP tracks were fine. Diddy Kong never lets me down, so I knew that in advance, but what's going on with the arcade games? Well, of the three we're going through, it's important to mention all these tracks are mainly here to mesh with the novelty of actually driving in a Mario Kart game. Most of these courses are simple shapes, a few hazards, and a lot of straightaways. The trade-off being these games having a massive focus on items that don't matter. The only exception in my eyes being Bowser's Factory, which even then, it's it's really not that bad. The biggest potential offenders in this bundle are Yoshi Falls, Woohoo Loop, and London Loop. But I promise you, Yoshi Falls is fine if you added some more railings and remove access to the waterfalls. I trust Woohoo Island with my life. Nothing bad would happen racing there. And just like the rest of the UK, London Loop is a sad, gray, flavorless place where nothing of interest happens. And so any major changes would keep it about the same. Now that's all the stuff I'd argue is fine, but the next tier? Honestly, still, yes, I, I I think this next group's still okay. Welcome to the Salty Spittoon, where only the toughest go-karters go to have three-lap races if you aren't good at doing bigger, scary races. Moo Moo Meadows is the prime example in this bunch. There's gotta be major changes in the track to be totally fine, enough to where these changes would make the course play and feel entirely different. Like, if I can't total my car on these cows, is it really worth it? A few of these tracks are absolutely here because they need their hazards to function. When I look at Peach beach, I need those cataquacks to launch everyone into orbit. Desert Hills really does need the pokies. Moomoo Farm has its... Well, I guess Moomoo Farm could go down. Here's some of the courses that also belong here. I'm throwing them all together mainly because I don't feel like going through these tracks. A lot of them have the same issues, usually just like a water hazard or some sort of ramp. And truthfully, these are in an odd spot where they don't deserve to be that high, but they definitely shouldn't go lower. I love me Royal Raceway, but I know damn well that one jump needing to be toned down would ruin the point of it. I do need to talk about a few of these guys, though. Ribbon Road's one of the first tiny courses where either the racers get shrunk down or they go to a giant replica of something. For this one, I'll mainly be looking at the remake 
think where it's a giant bedroom. I think this is fine otherwise, just ultimately coming from the risk of being tiny and the construction of the area being a tad questionable. Ultimately, it's still fine, they just need to revise that gliding segment. Now, the chain chomps are a funny reoccurring hazard in a lot of the tracks. Sometimes they roam free, other times they're stuck and usually want death. This is a top offender in Peach Gardens, and this is an extremely bad habit for Mario. He he loves these things, it's it's very excessive in his courses. I wasn't expecting this as well, but Wario Coliseum is here, even though Wario clearly does not value vehicular safety regulations. He friggin' provides for the community with all these sources of entertainment, and I'm gonna make the argument that all the racers agreed to compete in a racing cage fight. This reminds me of that one scene in Cars 3, and I'm okay with this. Basically okay, would recommend some eye protection because of the sand and salt water. Now, Boston Building's actually based off this one thing. I'm sure a lot of you are too young to remember, uh, Luigi? Even though his iconic building is haunted and his backyard has some moving trees, it's miserable to live in, but not too bad for driving, though the cars are gonna be tracking mud in the house. That's- that's uncool. The bridge! I love the bridge, and the bridge is gonna kill people. The only reason Daisy Circuit is not lower is because of that one house shortcut. Otherwise, the roads were cleared off, there's traffic cones, perfectly safe. Hey look, my least favorite course! Fix that one turn and then it's fine. Unless you hate the rain. If you don't like driving in the rain, I'm, uh, I'm sorry for you. Other than the plane starting off mid-race, I would argue this is fine. Practically harmless outside of the forest segment, the floor is not your friend. This would be fine if there was some safety foam wrapped around the trees. I wouldn't encourage winter racing. I fully endorse Mr. Rossetti being run over. I never liked him, he, he hurt my feelings. You'd expect the place themed around fast underground trains to have fast underground trains, but I guess not! If you run into a parked train, that's your own fault. Star City is one of the last tracks in Diddy Kong Racing. It takes place off Earth, but I would assume it has oxygen and is safe. The planes in this game are my main concern, but like a lot of tracks, it isn't that big of a deal here. All the booster course tour tracks share the trait of being based on a real-world location. If we're to assume that all the Mario-ized versions of these places, then all of them would require closed roads at crucial landmarks, with the exception of this causing a ton of problems for the general public in these locations, a good amount of them are already fine. The only truthfully concerning things being the thwomps in Tokyo Blur and the oil rig and baseball sections of Los Angeles slabs. Besides those things, I'm keeping all these guys here. Alright, Daisy Hills is the last of this tier, and this is where I really need to bring up what exactly I'm doing for the racers and the cars. For all of this, I'm replacing the goofy Mario characters with regular people and then maintaining everything else. I want to match the exact in-game conditions besides the items. In Mario Kart by default, there's no safety equipment like helmets, but the cars can be held up with a glider and function underwater. I'd assume the Mercedes don't usually drive underwater, and I don't have the budget to confirm that. Most importantly, the lack of seatbelts make me extremely uncomfortable for some of these courses. This is going to be unbelievably important later on. Next, there's Tier 3. Uh, I don't, I don't know. When a track isn't that, that, that thing, it means that there are at least several variables important enough to where significant redesigns of the tracks would at least be required. Dolphin Shoals, as beautiful and as incredible as this one is with that alto sax that makes me smell colors, it has a lot of water. If a course has water, the challenge of poor eyesight underwater, plus needing to hold our breaths, there's not a single instance where the actual racers are prepared to drive underwater except for that one. So good luck trying to do this one underwater in a dark cave for three laps. The same logic applies to Boo Lake, Koopa Cape, Cheap Sheep Lagoon, Wario Shipyard, Amsterdam Drift, Piranha Plant Pipeline, and especially Piranha Plant Cove. So much can go wrong here. Like, so much. When it comes to gliding, I would argue it's a bit more lenient, like the car would have less resistance to higher winds among all that stuff. Courses like Rock Rock Mountain, Shy Guy Bazaar, Singapore Speedway, and Maka Woohoo share several problems, and this is one of them. If I'm go-karting with friends, if I'm gonna be taken out, I'd rather it be through a legit legitimate accident over flying out of a motor vehicle because of high winds. That sounds significantly more embarrassing. I don't want to be embarrassed at my own funeral. Chaco Valley has actual chocolate. I feel like these courses could go down if everyone covered their eyes and wore helmets. Beach, pits, train, not a fast one, still a train, also Big Egg and Bigger Falls. DK Jungle Parkway is here because of that bridge section. Not only do I not trust this part, but the ferry can easily fall off the waterfall. I wouldn't drive here. Is this one actually made of cheese? It, it should be higher for lactose intolerant people, but if you're not lactose intolerant, then lower, I guess. So, I mean, th th this is fine. The first ice course. The lack of warmer gear on these characters concerns me, but this one looks just pleasant enough to where I'm gonna let it slide. It's also fortunate that that frozen pond has very thick ice. Good job, big loop, big space. The only major obstacles of danger that could possibly be boarded off, I feel like going around is the call here. Same with the ruins, including the falling thingies. I'm bad at analyzing traffic, but I feel like Shroom Ridge has enough wide roads to where passing these 
slow cars isn't that big of a deal. Plus, the roads have no issues that just require a competent driver. And where are these cars going? Where do where do any of these cars go in the traffic? They're just loops. I've unironically lost hours of my life wondering what these people do. Oh yeah, also the bridge. This is a mall on a weekday. Not really that much of an issue, but again, the cars. What's up with the cars? Thwomps, more sand. Bangkok Rush has this bouncy part. I feel like it would not work. I feel like you would fall through. Rome, uh, uh, Rome that uh, has the Colosseum part. I don't think it's safe or legal. You're not supposed to mess with the thing. And then there's squeaky clean sprint. How often is this bathroom used? Is it a giant bathroom? Who uses this bathroom? Is this the same house as the Ribbon Road track? Is it safe for the tiny racers to be around the giant amounts of cleaning chemicals? Is this of good hygiene? Should we trust the sink, toilet, or even the bathtub? Who dropped the engagement ring down the drain? And who left all the water running despite the drain? I love this course, but I also don't. Time to go over anti-gravity. That's the gimmick introduced in 8 and 8 Deluxe. The simple ability to drive across walls, ceilings, it really adds to the variety of courses. So much can be done with this mechanic on creative levels, and there doesn't seem to be any drawbacks. Uh-oh. Since this is meant to be an exact recreation, even though the cars have anti-gravity and there's been gravity flipping in the games, there are no seatbelts, no harnesses, no nothing. Some courses need extremely massive remakes to be even remotely plausible, because as is, so many modern tracks become way more dangerous looking at this approach. No seatbelts, you fall to your death, what can I say? In this tier, uh-oh, these courses may be not consider what would need to be changed, just they made me say, uh-oh, Mario Kart Stadium, even though it's the first track in 8 Deluxe, automatically goes here because, uh, the, the, that, they're gonna fall and it's, they're gonna, it's gonna hurt, uh-oh. Can't forget about when gliding and water get thrown into the mix, Water Park has them both. Sweet Sweet Canyon has, like, Coke or something. Electro Dome goes upside down at one point, it's probably impossible to complete, but if a racer fell out, I would argue they have a shot at surviving that fall. That is what I'm going with in this group. Making stupid straw arguments so not everything here is in the very top of the rankings. Twisted Mansion, Cloud Top Cruise, and Ice Ice Outpost are also being thrown here for those reasons. But there's still some other peeps that earn their spot through having living hellholes that only the turtles can survive driving through. There's a lot of turtles. Like the Ghost Valleys, I don't know how far these falls are, nor where the racetracks are. Why would you host a race on one of the most dangerous parts of the road, and while it's active, and at night? This one kind of feels more like trespass over racing, the giant fish are my main concern. GBA Mario Circuit, in the original this would have been in the very beginning baby tier, though because unfortunately all iterations are being looked at, this little guy is here because of the remake. I'm entirely right thinking this is a bad idea, but it's too late to go back now, there's sideways grass. I, I only have so much faith in Lakitu, or Lakitu. I'm gonna call him Steven from now on. The pier is broken. Fun track, terrible cruise ship. There's like two pools. The dining center's unstable. You could easily fall into the aquarium. Also, there's no fish in it. Horrible vacation spot. Donkey Kong has this really bad habit with pits of debt. On DK Mountain, it's a little more sensical since this isn't meant to be a public area. But DK Summit is designed with these falls in mind. Anyone can fall down. Donkey Kong does not value customer safety. How do these death pits even show up? How do they get approved for everyday skiers? I've been at ski resorts before. This isn't like... A super common thing. Same with DK Pass. I'm a little starstruck why anyone would be driving on a thin road on a mountainside, especially when the roads are icy. But to be fair, Donkey Kong likes bananas and wears a tie, so I can understand the vision. Nobody talks about this, but Wario has a really inconsistent moral track. He's illustrated in this light where he looks stupid greedy at times, but like he benefits everyone with his speeding. He does it for entertainment. He provides jobs. For every bad thing Wario does, there's Wario's equivalent exchange, and he does stuff debatably better. With that being said, not only do I not trust this as a racetrack, but those houses in the back look horrible. Ever since I laid eyes on these homes, I've felt nothing but guilt. This is where Tiny Tim's family lives. Big tree. The big squish music dudes are probably not good. Sewer race. This feels like trespassing. I feel like I'm not welcome here. Cold, slippery, scary Christmas mountain. What? What's What's this dojo for anyway? The dimensions make no sense. Everything's too tall and those ninjas aren't even hiding away. Berlin Byways is funny to me, not only because the racetrack takes place on an open road in Berlin, but the Berlin Wall's here. That implies both world wars happen, and since this is the Mario version of this historical city, that means in the Mario universe, the world has dealt with all the stuff in the world wars. YouTube says I'm not 
not allowed to share or show any of that, is one of the most unfortunate implications I've seen that involve Luigi. Like, what side is the Mushroom Kingdom on during all this? What side was the Koopa Kingdom on? I'm not gonna point fingers, but based on how Bowser acts as a leader, I'm, I'm saying it's more of a probability than a possibility that the old leaders of the Koopa Kingdom were on the side the, of the... The Allied Powers. Bowser has a limit on morals and mutually targets the greater threat. I don't think Bowser befriended Germany. Aha! I have deceived you! This entire video was actually made so I could talk about the planes in Diddy Kong Racing! Aha! I tricked you! I'm evil! Diddy Kong Racing requires you to use cars, planes, and hovercrafts depending on the tracks. And as I said before, it has a character named Bumper. These four tracks absolutely deserve to be here because the cartoon animals have to do, uh, the, the planes stuff. That, that could, that could kill them. I don't want to see them die. Look at them. Look at the clock. And that brings us to our final tier of this little all of ranking. Oh no. These are the courses that anyone involved would take a look at and say the iconic phrase, Oh no. Ignoring all the previous ones, just about every remaining ice and cold course is probably bad. I mainly say this because a good amount of them have water hazards, or in some case, require going into the water. Sherbet Land endangers baby penguins and has easy waterfalls. Sherbet Land, but the other Sherbet Land, forces water driving. At least with a few of these courses, I can make some arguments about competent drivers or something. Not here, though. In fact, the same applies with the lava-based courses, but the opposite. Grumble Volcano, Lakeside Park, Hot Top Volcano, and, uh, yeah, all Bowser castles, lava has his habit of being hot, hate to say it, they belong here. A lot of fire hazards, a lot of scary, scary Bowsers. Why do you have children? Anti-gravity makes its return. Let me just say, I think and hope the racers don't deserve this. I believe 8's Mario Circuit has one of the highest mortality rates. Like, half of this course is upside down. It's a bad racetrack and a bad Smash Bros. stage. Uh, Shy Guy Falls it has that waterfall. Dragon Driftway has something. I don't know, this course this is kind of a forgettable one. Mute City, Wildwoods, Big Blue. Seatbelts would have worked wonders on these. Is Wario just confused? Or like, what is his intentions? He makes a ski resort, makes a dam, has all this wonderful stuff and then like icy dk death pits scary river caverns uh trees wario loves giving mixed signals he needs couples therapy and that's okay yoshi's island doesn't goof around near active volcanoes uh geysers huff and puffins who do you think makes their shoes thin roads above water and also a whole dinosaur it's the name that could be an evil dinosaur that eats super mario for all we know had the pinballs not been here this is lower the ending especially could crush everyone i would imagine this is about stressful as running on the front lines weird place to put this one, but I would assume based on Mario 64, I'd assume this is a grandfather clock, and my logic is that anyone who's in a clock is gonna feel the big hand when it hits 12 and make funny ringing sounds like that one at my grandma's house. If that's the case, you have about 58 minutes to get in and out of there, because if you don't, you would instantly go deaf, and then maybe instantly deaf, but you wouldn't hear that part coming. <laughs> That one canon segment feels unreliable, like I would assume the Hoens or something would make it go wrong. Big bouncy shrooms over the void. Traffic, but like bomb cars, who's driving these? I know I'm asking a lot of questions, but SOMEBODY'S GOTTA DO IT! To that one guy who's gonna complain about the Mario Kart courses in Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. Mario Circuit is with the Wii one, Mushroom Bridge stays here. You can snowboard on the edges in the bridge, and also shoot out the cannon. Broken legs, funny times. And last of all, the objective winner for the deadliest of deadlies, all the Rainbow Roads. At least one of them takes first place. Now usually, you can't breathe in space last time I checked. So that means all the space ones are a no-no, even the ones you can see on the ground. I said I had faith in Lakitu, but I think my faith has run out. The fishing rod's gotta give out someday. In the situation where we could breathe in space, the order would be from least to most dangerous, 8, 64, double dash, GBA, 7, Wii, and of course, the original Rainbow Road. There's no railings, flops, jagged turns, no seatbelt could save you. This isn't a good, this is a bad, Super Mario is setting a bad example for our youth. Wow. Who would have guessed a cartoon racing game would have so much inexcusable amount of safety precautions ignored? I know this is the same franchise that includes the beloved characters like Larry the Turtle. I shouldn't expect that much, but it was fun thinking about it like this. Well, I'm gonna skedaddle now, gang. Call me Dot because I'm dipping. Just gonna walk out of here using my legs. Well, guys, I guess you really can't have shit in Detroit. <laughs>